dive straight in. Today, I want to share with you guys my journey to medical school. Do feel free to ask me any questions if you want. Coming here, you know, I was I, w I had already done like a year of university in Ghana at KNUSC. Um, I did not go back into my second year because that's when we knew we we're gonna come here, so we didn't want to waste the money. Coming here, I didn't have any idea um, how even going to school was gonna do be like. So we're just in it, you know. We just had to figure it out ourselves. I don't come from. Um, a family where my parents, you know, are super highly educated. So when we came here, thankfully we had the my aunt that we came to stay with had a daughter um, who was in nursing school, was applying to go into nursing school. Um, who they kind of they were the ones that kind of helped us enroll in schools that work. And I would say it's a little challenging if you do not have any family here um, who is going to walk you through the process. And I'm really thankful for my aunt, but you know, it wasn't. There was just it was just a one way route. They all there wasn't a lot of options for us to choose from. I didn't want to be a doctor like from the childhood, like most people would say. Um, but when I did science, like I liked science, it was difficult for me, but I liked it. I preferred it to a lot of the social sciences. It was so abstract. I'm like, I don't know what these people are talking about, but with science, I could like figure it out some way or the other. My favorite subject was math. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, so I guess I could have done math and had a PhD in math or something. History. But um, when I came here, everybody that you know we had come into contact with was either doing nursing um, or in the banking, kind of like in the banking system, like in the finance system. So I didn't see a lot of professional students besides nursing, um, like doctors, pharmacists, lawyers, or anything like that in the Ghanaian community. Back in Ghana, I didn't get the opportunity to go into medicine, even though I got like biochemistry for the university. You can still like apply to get into medicine or and do fee pain like fee pain is expensive i do not come from that kind of a privilege home people so that was on the back burner so fast forward you know i started school at columbus state community college while we were working part-time me and my twin sister at a nursing home um as sdnas thankfully um my aunt helped us go to go into sdna school before i started school my sister went into nursing i'm not looking down on nurses or any of my sisters my twin sister is a nurse my older sister is a nurse if i decided to be a nurse it was because everybody was doing it and because i just wanted to do it finish and you know just move on with life and i didn't want it to be i didn't want to regret it in the future nursing is super hard for me i was looking at it more in the future i wanted to be more of an independent giver i wanted to and looking at me in my 10 year um future plan like what i want to do i didn't feel like being a nurse would be would give me that ability will give me that capability will give me that opportunity to help the masses that I want to be in the future so that was why I didn't go into nursing I started with community college I went to Columbus State Community College here in Columbus and you know I did like my sciences um, a lot of my G classes there um, then I transferred after a whole, after one year mostly like the average is transferred two years after and I wish I had done that uh, because going to Colum Ohio State after one year in Columbus State was like a whole different world. Ohio State was too big for me. I'm like, Cairn was was big, well, Ohio State is bigger. Ohio State was just too big, you know, the classes were big. Um, I was just not interested in school. It was just like too much. Like, why is it all over the place? So many people. I'm, I'm not that kind of person. So I wish I had stayed like two years in columbus state you know taking my organic chemistry there taking some harder classes you know in columbus state because they it was more of like an easier challenge um if you did it in a community college after one year in columbus state i transferred to ohio state the ohio state university yeah in columbus um and i continued i started with um biochemistry but after I did organic chemistry, which I failed miserably, well, I didn't get an F, but 
I got like a C or something, C minus or something. I was like, Jesus, I cannot, con if this organic chemistry <laughs> is going to do this, I it's just going to be worse. I cannot continue this way. I have to switch fast. But then I was confused. I didn't get any direction as to if I wanted to go into medical school. This is what I had to do or these are the grades I had to get. I just knew I had to take these classes, pass them, you know, finish school, do the MCAT and get a good grade go you don't have to necessarily get aaas or bbbs or anything like that which i'm not saying you have to to get into medical school but i wish i had gotten that information or i had been patient enough or i had um you know just looked out for it more so that i could be able to maybe i would have gone into medical school earlier who knows so i started I State University with biochemistry. I thought it wasn't. I thought it wasn't not going to go well. I just did one year of that, and I switched to psychology. So I finished my undergraduate with BSc in psychology. You could also do a BA in psychology. To be honest, you could do anything you want to do here in the United States, any major you want to do and still go to medical school, okay? All you have to do is to take the pre-med classes, pass them well, do that and apply to medical school. In my mind, I was like, if I don't get into medical school, <laughs> at least I could apply to be a clinical psychologist. Um, so that was what was, that was my plan B. And through all my undergrad, all I was thinking of was I wanted to finish school so early because we have started with my peers back home. You know, I, now I started like afresh. I didn't have to continue my education. That's the one thing too that most people find it challenging because especially when you're done with your undergrad sometimes and you're back home in Ghana and you come here and you have to continue or you or you have no you have to restart it it's kind of difficult and i was not cognizant of the fact i was not taking into consideration the fact that for me to go into medical school it's not just about me finishing early it was me getting the good grades and you know being able to go through the process you know the getting some other extracurricular activities included in the in the education that you're getting to be able to be a very good candidate for medical school. I finished my undergrad in 2017, um, but throughout undergrad, I really did not join any clubs, any things like that, because I went from home to school. I wasn't living on campus, and that's the one thing too that I wish I had lived on campus at least for a year to really integrate myself into the American system. I think in my third year, I'm getting to the end of my third year, that's when I knew, oh, I'm way behind if I want to get into medical school because I had not done any volunteering. I did not know of any doctors and I don't have any doctors in my family at close that I I could, you know, do some shadowing. So in my third year, that's when I started volunteering at Grant Medical Center. Um, oh, Grants Medical Hospital in downtown. My fourth year, I did an internship at a psych, I'd say a counseling facility. Uh, so after after undergrad, I started working, and I was at well, kind of like in my third year, I applied to medical schools. I withdrew my application because I was like, no, because I wasn't a good candidate. But I did apply to a Caribbean medical school. St. George's University. Um, I got in. I had the interview in Cincinnati. I went with my twin sister and I got into medical school. And I declined my invitation. I, I was like, no, nope, this is not for me. After undergrad, I still didn't have any shadowing um, experience. So I started emailing some people, writing letters to some people, to some doctors, random doctors. And I and I got um, a doctor to reply to me and I was able to shadow there for a whole week. Um, so that was really great and I'm really, really thankful to Dr. Eugenia Kim. So when I was doing my applications, I applied to um, both osteopathic and, um, and MD schools. Oh, I guess I forgot to tell you about my MCAT. 
So to get into medical school, I'm sorry, <laughs> to get into medical school, you have to take the MCAT. So I took mine twice. After my third year, this is when I applied to the um, Caribbean Medical School. I took the MCAT um, and yeah, I did horrible. After undergrad, that's when I took my MCAT again. And I, I just went up by like two, two points or something. So it's not like I I jumped really high. I didn't really do a lot of MCAT prep and that is also one thing that um, I guess I didn't have a lot of information so I didn't even know you could do MCAT prep. You know there are like you could go to there are MCAT I guess schools things that you could go to for people to teach you and all that stuff. I didn't know I just bought like the Kaplan books like the whole bunch and I just studied it. My first one I used like two weeks of a long two weeks a long time to study for the MCAT my second one I think I used a month so to be honest I didn't really put a lot of time into it just because <sighs> I don't know but you need an MCAT to go even if you do any kind of major you do biology chemistry whatever art dance tap dance whatever major you do <laughs> um, you still need the MCAT to get into medical school the application cycle is saying your primary application and then you wait for secondary application when you do get secondary applications it is good news it means like you're a good candidate they are looking they've looked at your um your transcript your stuff and they feel like you know you'll be a great candidate for your school but after the secondary application that's when you really get an interview i applied to a lot of school like 20 schools i got a lot of um secondary applications after the secondary application everything went exactly everything went silent i did not get any interviews this is the first time i'm saying it anywhere besides maybe my family knowing i did not get any interviews only one school gave me an interview out of the like 15 or 20 or 10 whatever secondary applications that i got only one school gave me an interview and that is the school I am in now, Ohio University. I didn't think I did super great and I didn't think I failed miserably. I enjoyed all of my interviews. Um, but after that, that was the only school I got an interview at. So I was excited regardless, even if I got into it or not. You know what I mean? I was waitlisted. So I was like, oh, okay. So at least they see potential. During that period, I think I was called from the school and they were like, they they could put me into a postback program where the tuition is paid for mind you if they said the tuition the tuition wasn't paid for i would say no because there was no way i was going to take more loans to go into school to go to a postback program that i had no idea i was of the future if i was going to get into medical school or not so i talked to my twin sister about that um and Yes, I finally decided to go to to take the postback program at Ohio University in Athens. Um, it was a one-year postback program. The, the only caveat was to get a good grade, like a 3.0, which has now changed with other extracurricular stuff we had to fulfill, and we will automatically get admission into the next academic year. I did postback for one year down in Athens, and hi, I killed it. Okay. <laughs> I quit my job everything went down to Athens so it was just about me studying and I was like I'm going to give my all it's all about sacrifice because that's all you're going to be do doing the rest of your life so after that one year got admission into medical school and really that that has been my medical school journey I would say I took two whole gap years the first year where after my undergrad where I was working and applying to medical school again and my second year of gap year would be during that post back program at some point i basically gave up that gap year like one year during the application cycle i had gotten brochures from from other programs you know i was looking into phd psychology i was um, clinical psychology i was um, looking into master's degree in nursing i was looking i was just i was looking to do anything I had a friend who also really encouraged me, uh, thank you, you know yourself. It's really been a long journey. I started medical school at 26 I, and I was 27 there, so 
<laughs> to be honest, you could go into medical school anytime, any year. All you have to do is set your mind to do it. Because if you give up at some point, it's kind of hard to bounce back. I'm just praying you don't give up. You don't give up on the process because it's tiring, all the extracurricular you have to do. You have to do. And let me tell you, I did not get a good grade in undergrad. Like I said, I think I was a little lazy as compared to like what I did back home in Ghana. And when I came here, because I had that privilege of my parents being here, I like the fact that I also had to do post -bad because I had to fend for myself. Don't give up if you have like a low score. If you're able to take the classes again, do so. I didn't have that confidence that if I retook it, I was going to do better. So I did not retake them. Do well in your science classes um get some advisors that will help you um that will direct you that will guide you through the process of mcat doing some volunteering doing some shadowing um if you have medical doctor family members ask them to be able to connect you with other doctors you know the more you're able to do a lot of shadowing, the better your opportunity, um, even the better your experiences. Most people shadow like at least three doctors. So every time I talk about my medical school, I say it's God's favor. I have no idea how I'm even here. Um, Post back was a blessing to me. Um, everything has been a blessing because I feel like I'm the exception to the rule. Mostly on immigrants, it's hard because you have responsibilities at home especially if you're also married but if you want to do it i i would say go for it don't let anybody put you down um have faith pray about it um do the things you love to do help people um you know enjoy life but be conscious of that fact that you're going to be dedicating your life, your whole life to service. You're going to serve people and you're going to do great regardless. Don't let that biological clock that will be to the bed in our trust to, you know, put you down to say that you cannot do it. Like, regardless, it doesn't have to be medical school, nursing school, law school, even regular college, some professional school, anything that you want to do. Especially we immigrants, we give a lot of excuses. You have to be able to invest in yourself. Do you, boo? That's all I got for you. Thank you for joining me today and 